Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, onto your phones, and welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to click the subscribe button, the like or dislike or share button. Anyway, um, I tend to talk about a variety of subjects, mostly to do with England and what's going on with the deportations and the immigration system. I'm not an immigration lawyer. I have not, I'm not, <laughs> I cannot say I'm an authority on the subject, but I do try and find out as much as I can. And I talk about Jamaica because that's where my parents are from. And I talk about lots of different things. But anyway, today I wanted to share with you um, the deportees welcome in Jamaica. Are they receiving the welcome that they should be receiving, that they've been paid for to receive. And a late, a Miss St. Clair uh, sent me a video. It's six years old. It's entirely relevant. And you'll notice that what it states the deportees should get when they arrive in Jamaica and what we saw on the Teach Them video is not the same totally different. So I thought I would share that with you. Um, a little bit of background. David Cameron, you may recall, visited Jamaica in 2015. Now when he visited, he visited on the basis of reparations because of Britain's involvement, well 200 year involvement in the slave trade and there was talks for re um, reparations. But anyway, what it turned out was David Cameron visiting the prisons in Jamaica and saying that we, they were in such a poor conditions that the 600 Jamaicans that we have in the UK couldn't possibly go back to those kind of conditions. So they wanted to give them 25 million sterling pounds to upgrade their prison system. Anyway, that caused an uproar because the Jamaicans were seeking reparations for slavery and the focus on prisons wasn't on their agenda or in their vision. So what happened is it caused a bit of an uproar and they were saying that they should use it for hospitals and they should use it for education systems. But then because there was such an uproar, it went quiet. <clears throat> now, a lot of us have been wondering, did Jamaica take that 25 million? And if so, what did they do with it? Because um, it just went completely quiet. Now, I have a funny feeling that that 25 million went towards the National Deportation, what's it called? The National Organization for Deported Migrants Project. I just have a funny feeling, it's just my opinion, that it went towards that project, which is meant to welcome deportees with dignity. And I'm going to show you the video in a minute. And when, um, and when um, David Cameron left, because we didn't hear anything, it just went on the back burner until a couple of years ago when we had those Jamaicans deported. And they, I think Jamaicans in the UK thought that because they protested and the Windrush scan and the Windrush report hadn't come out, I think that they thought, okay, everything was sorted, there wouldn't be any more deportations. I don't think they realised that um, Jamaica and the British government, well the Jamaican government and the British government had signed a foreign aid funded deal that takes effect in 2020, this, which is this year which is probably why we've had a resumption of the deportation to Jamaica. It's probably just found its way through into the Jamaican bank accounts. But my issue is, is that regardless of what deal has been made, the deportees should receive the service we see in the video that I'm about to show you. So I'm going to show it to you now. And then I'm going to show you just a little tiny bit of the Teach Them video to show how we saw them received in Jamaica. Every year a large number of Jamaicans 
Americans find themselves repatriated to their home country against their wishes. The challenge of resuming a life and livelihood in Jamaica after an absence which might be as much as 20 or 30 years can be daunting, but there is help at hand and the challenge can be met. The British High Commission, in collaboration with the Government of Jamaica, has developed a support system for people who have been deported, designed to meet their needs on arrival back in Jamaica. We hope to promote the safe reintegration of such people and their families into Jamaican society, to increase opportunities for employment and training, and by so doing, to avoid any temptation either to reoffend locally or to be tempted to travel illegally with false documentation. The aim of this DVD is to both reassure and inform those about to return to Jamaica that there are free and friendly services throughout the island standing ready to help get their life back on track. Every week a number of Jamaican citizens are required to return to their home country having overstayed their immigration conditions or committed a crime in another country. We can only imagine their feelings as they tear out the aircraft window on the final approach to a land they may have only spent a small portion of their lives in. A sense of wonder at the vibrant, beautiful colors of both land and sea and the anticipation of a warm welcome from family and friends will be tempered by apprehension as a reality of finding a job or occupation in unfamiliar circumstances hits home. Fortunately, help is at hand. Processing of returnees takes place at both national airports. A brief interview will be conducted by officials to verify the identity and the background of each returnee. This is a short process and before long returnees will be able to collect their baggage and get ready for the next stage of their lives. It's important to collect form C-27 from customs before exiting the airport as this will facilitate the tax-free shipment of personal effects over the ensuing six month period. A key support organization is the National Organization of Deported Migrants, or NODM as they're known, supported by the British High Commission and the Government of Jamaica. The NODM's responsibilities include providing transportation, reuniting persons with their families, and processing queries regarding accommodation and redocumentation. Uh, NODM is an organization run by deported migrants, run by, directed by the decisions are made in the interest of NODM by its membership who are deported migrants. Jamaica, the most vibrant little country in the world. You will find that the people are welcoming and colorful, and our dynamic culture is always adding new elements. The British High Commission and Government of Jamaica support local organizations in Kingston, Port Antonio and Montego Bay to ensure that those without a place to stay can have food, shelter and advice free of charge. The Open Arms Drop-In Center in Kingston provides free short-term accommodation and three meals a day along with trained staff to assess the needs of returnees and advise on skills training and employment opportunities. Hibiscus Jamaica provides a similar service for women and children, focusing on social welfare and income generation for those seeking a way to support themselves and their children. A full-time trained social worker is on hand to help reintegrate the returnees and help them find a stable and secure platform to live on. I've started a business. The name of my business is MNR. I sell from a print to an anchor. You can find everything there including ear, nail, glue, polish, chicken bag, and clothing, slippers, everything that you need, you can find there. And I support my community in a very special way. In the future, I want to expand my business into wholesale, and I can sell to smaller shops around in my community, and um, that I can also employ people to work with me. Portland Rehab Center is located in beautiful Port Antonio and Open Heart Charitable Mission can be found on the outskirts of Montego Bay. Both facilities offer free accommodation under the program along with a range of support services designed to reintegrate individuals safely into the community. If you don't have a birth certificate, the Registrar General's Department should be your first stop. The process is very simple. First, you will need to speak to the information agent to get a number. Next,
Next, you'll have to wait until your number is called, at which point a customer service representative will take your information and you will verify the information and sign the document. The cashier will be your last stop at the RGD. At this point, you'll get a receipt to collect your birth certificate at a later date. The next step, your TRN. In applying for your TRN, you will have to bring along with you your birth certificate in addition to two passport pictures signed and stamped by a justice of the peace. Similar to the RGD's office, you'll be given a number and an application form to fill out while you wait. When your number is called, a representative will then begin the process of getting your TRN card. Both the TRN and birth certificate application process can be carried out in regional centers throughout the island. Finding employment in Jamaica, like anywhere else, can have its challenges. But there are organizations ready to assist our returnees with the job searches or advice on starting their own businesses. There are also opportunities to complete skills training programs free of cost with a registered organization such as the Heart Trust and Open Arms. These aim to equip deported persons with vocational and literacy skills necessary to seek employment or start a business in Jamaica. When I came back in 2008, I tried many different things to find work and find a living that will you know, sustain myself. I got a chance to go to art. You know, that has been a tremendous blessing. I got some much needed education. Would like to back that, back that up with some CXC subject which I'm still pursuing right now. I, I have a word game that I've invented. I would love to see that on the market. And the experience at heart gave me the opportunity to design the board because learning Photoshop, I was able to design the board exactly as how I was envisioning it in my mind. What we wanted to do was to get uh, deported men and women as they return from England to structure a program for their reintegration back into the Jamaican society. We had intense discussions among the deported men and women, helping to come to terms with their reality back here in Jamaica, trying to redefine themselves uh, and, and then to talk about where is it that they want to go from here. The vast majority of those men and women were not interested in going back to England. What they wanted more than anything else was a chance, a second chance at life to restructure their lives in their home country, which is Jamaica. I can think of a young man um, who was part of our workshop and, you know, um, you now runs his own courier business. He does curry around town. When I came back to Jamaica, I was shocked for two days because of the whole procedure and I think it was rather embarrassing, you know, going through the whole process there and even by the airport. Stigma is always going to be there no matter what, you know, friends, family, no matter how they sit and laugh with you, they, that stigma is still going to be there. So, you know, the best if you can just try and overcome it. You know, I decided to get out there because I didn't want to sit down and I've heard a lot of experiences. So I went out there, got out, tried to get a job to try to take care of myself. And from one thing to another, I, I said I started a tire repair. I did some cab service for a minute. Um, I also was working on the bus system. And from there to the postal service, where um, I started my career service, which is Quick Runner. And by there, I got my first bike through the credit union where I've had some income that's why I invested some money in the credit union and by working I purchased another bike and also that's when I started to expand where I had to employ workers and um, it's a team of four of us because I employ three person other persons with me also business is relatively good I've had about six companies and I'm still being recommended um, as the business progress. I also purchase a house out of all of this. 
So now I'm also a homeowner, paying my bills and having a steady flow of income on a daily basis and try to invest while I, I continue doing my service for the country and for myself. Starting over is always a challenge, but it's usually a challenge worth overcoming. We know our returning citizens will have a positive impact in our society and we will provide as much support as they start new lives in Jamaica. See, it's much nicer when you talk about call them returning citizens or repatriation against their wishes rather than deportees, you know, referring to deportation because two of them mean the same thing, but two of them have totally different connotations. Returning citizens implies that they have certain rights, they're entitled to a certain way, they're entitled to a certain way of life, whereas deport deportees, you kind of associate them with criminals, you associate them with dread, it's an embarrassment, You, they feel humiliated and that kind of stuff. So when you go back to Jamaica, how do you want to be perceived? Do you want to be perceived as a returning citizen, a returnee, or do you want to be um, referred to as a deportee? Now to a certain extent, that is in your hands. If, like I've suggested or recommended in previous videos, you start sending money back so that if, if and when you are returned to the country, you can start your own little business. Fortunately, that gentleman, the last one who had a bike, he was saving money in the credit union. So he was able to um, establish his little business. But if you're going to wait until they, they boot you out of the country, you're going to be in a vulnerable position. The fact of the matter is, regardless of how you are deported, you should be received with dignity. And as the National um, Office of Deportation of Migrants, the NODM, um, are showing us, that is what they should be receiving. They shouldn't be receiving what Teach Dem showed us the other day, which I am going to show you, but I'm not going to show you it show it to you in its entirety. I'm just going to show the key points which show how what we saw and what what we what we've just seen in that first video and what we saw how they were received. Because the way we see it is that we don't see that interaction with customs. We don't know if they got the C twenty seven. We don't know if they're told that they have six months within which they can get their personal effects back into the country, tax-free. We don't know if they've seen that. What we see is that big old bus bringing them to that little, what well, I don't even know what it is, that little area where you've got a couple of guys walking in and out and you have the deportees walking and jumping in a cab. We don't see that reception that we saw in the first video. So where's that? David Cameron, when he came, went to Jamaica in 2015, I'm not quite sure why he was so concerned about the state of the prisons. Why would you be worried about black convicts in the UK? What kind of prisons they're going to come back to, the U to Jamaica in? I don't understand that at all. And then, that was in 2015, five years, so we know that this was made in six years ago, which is a year before David Cameron visited Jamaica, so it was already planned. The deportation project was already in place, and David's visit to Jamaica was just a formality to make it look like things were starting off from then. Now, I don't know how many of the 600 have gone back already, but the money should not have finished. They should be able to receive the treatment promised in this video. Anyway, let me just show you how they were actually received. Is that the right thing? Oh, it's an advert. Hold on one sec. And this is the Teach Them video which I showed you the, the other day, but I'm only going to show you a, a minute or so of it until the deportees come.
Okay, you see them there, the deportees? Where's this lovely reception that they're supposed to receive? They're in an exposed area. And this is where they're going. So anyway, I'm not going to go too much into it, but all I'm saying is that it's two different pictures, isn't it? So what is the truth? Has Jamaica taken this money and not producing the quality of service they pledge to produce, or what? Because that's what it looks like. So, if any of you, if it does exist, they may not have accessed it because they do not know. So, it's important if you know anybody who is being deported, Tell them, just give them the information about the C-27 that they must pick up. That they get that from the customs. They're entitled to that. Let them know about the TRN, which is the tax registration number, which is integral to their integration. Um, let them know about the free shipment of personal effects. You've got six months within which you can send their personal effects over and there's no tax. And Head Trust, sorry, the Heart Trust and Open Arms Trust, I don't know if that's by referral, but that's supposed to be where you get your training, they do literacy, they do all kinds of things. I don't know, like I said before, if that's a referral system. Also, key, to check out the website, www.nodm.org, that's O-R-G, O for Oscar, R for radiator, G for golf, dot J for Jamaica, and M for mother. So that's www.nodm.org.jn. I'll put it in the description below. And the telephone number is 1876-356-1126. And anyone who is contacting NODM, let me have your feedback as to whether or not it is producing the service we saw in that first video. So we can look into what's actually happening. Okay, I'm not saying I personally can do that, but at least we'll know whether or not the service that they're promising is actually available, and whether it's just that the deportees or the returnees do not know about it. Okay, so um, like I said, the foreign aid funded deal has it take, takes effect um, 2020. And so I think that is probably why we um, are seeing a resumption of the deportations now. And I think I said before, Howard, um, oh, I've forgotten his last name now. Anyway, he works for the penal system. Um, said it's not a good use of foreign aid funds. But did I write it down here? Anyway, it's not an important point. Howard League, that's his name, of the penal reform um, section. Said it's not a, it's wrong use for foreign aid funds. Yeah, I think that's all for now. I hope you found this useful. And that's all. Bye-bye.